Uh, how do we get this girl in the hotel and how do you kill them? When we go, we go inside the hotel after eating, after making love, we sleep for some time. Now hold on her legs. Now, now use the knife on her legs and let her don't shout. If she shout before that, I will follow the television up. Want to kill her, she will not who I'm drunk with me. Here on my channel, I shed light on true crimes, murders, and it just so happens that most of the Nigerian true crime stories that I've talked about almost always has to do with ritual killings. Nigeria has its fair share of serial killers, although most of them kill their victims in order to use them for one ritual purpose or the other. When you google the phrase serial killers in Nigeria, one prominent name that will pop up on your screen is that of the infamous Potakot serial killer whose crimes I would be talking about today. David Gracious West is a convicted Nigerian serial killer. His killing spree started from July until September of 2019. Making it three months, this man carried out these gruesome murders. Although it lasted for a few months, but this man caused terror in the city of Port Harcourt and also in Nigeria as a whole. He targets vulnerable women regardless of age and brutally murders them. According to reports, he confessed to murdering 15 women and these are the ones he confessed to. These are the ones the authorities know about. This man could have possibly murdered over 15 women, which the authorities do not know about. And Nigerian authorities are not exactly the ones to carry out in-depth um, investigations into cases like this, you know, in order to uncover possible victims. He had a rather specific method of killing which was consistent with each of his victims. And this made authorities certain that they had a serial killer on their hands. He murdered women in the city of Lagos, Oweri, but most of his murders took place in Potakot city. Reports showed that he met his victims online in bars, in clubs, as well as in public transportations. His victims were mostly sex workers. David approaches his unsuspecting victims, promises to pay for their drinks, or simply promises to pay them to hang out with him. He tells his victims that he is a military man and offers to pay them huge amounts of money to spend the night with him. And I would think he probably promises them irresistible amounts of money in order to get them to agree because he knows he would not end up giving them the money. When David victims agree, he would then take them to a hotel where they would both lodge for the night. He proceeds to sleeping with his victims and somewhere in the middle of the night, David wakes up and he turns on the volume of the television set to the highest and then he threatens his victims using a knife in order that his victims would not scream for help. It was reported that in order for David to get his victims to comply, he assures them that he was not going to hurt them if they cooperated with him. He probably tells them that he is after their money or their belongings. That way his victims would cooperate with him, allowing him to tie their hands, legs, mouth using strips of the hotel bed sheets with hopes that he was not going to kill them afterwards. David would then proceed to strangle his victims using the same strip of the hotel bed sheets. That was how David was able to get away with committing a clean murder, you know, without blood spill or struggle, without having his victims struggle or scream for help or even fight back. David would then leave the hotel the next morning with the victim's ATM card and other valuables. According to the police, his victims were always found lying lifeless on the bed, bound with a strip of white cloth, you know, from the bed sheets on their ankles, their arms, their neck and their mouth. At first, the police believed that the murders were connected to some form of ritual killings, but upon further investigations, the possibility was ruled out. The police soon declared a manhunt for a man they now believed is a serial killer. The terrifying developments brought fear upon the people of Port Harcourt City, especially women, since the serial killer only targeted women. At the height of the killing in September, outraged citizens took to the streets of Port Harcourt to protest. 
calling on authorities to solve the murders. The women in Port Harcourt, we no longer feel safe because we don't know when we'll be murdered. So we ask for protection. The government can protect us. They can do something. People wondered why there were no CCTV footage or some reports of guests staying at the hotels where David committed these crimes. And that is because David carefully targeted hotels in the poor areas of these cities. Eventually, David struck again. He killed another woman, but this would be his last kill. This time, David was unfortunate. After he had killed the lady and left the hotel, the hotel soon found the lifeless body of the woman on the bed in the exact same manner that David killed all of his victims. And by this time, the police had already put out a man on for David. They immediately realized that this is the work of the serial killer that the police put out a man hunt for. They immediately contacted the police and showed them the CCTV footage of David entering the hotel with the lady in the evening and also the footage of David leaving the hotel the next morning alone. The police shared the CCTV footage to all social media platforms so people would be able to put a face to the serial killer who has been terrorizing Patakot City for months. The footage immediately went viral. Finally, people could put a face to this monster. Everyone now knows what he looks like and they would be keeping an eye out for him. Of course, David might have seen his picture and also the CCTV footage circulating online. He knows he has been caught. He knows people would be out looking for him. So he decided to flee the city. He got on a bus going to Uyo, the capital of Akwaibo, a neighboring state in Nigeria, which is about two hours away from Botakot city. By that time, the police suspected that David would probably be trying to get away from the city. So they were waiting for David at the checkpoint. David was soon apprehended at the checkpoint about 45 minutes away from Botakot city. Now, the question on everyone's mind is what was his motives? Why did he murder these women? It's certainly not for ritual purposes as that has been ruled out as a possibility. And I can't say he murdered these women for their money because his victims are mostly sex workers who hardly have any money. So what was his reason? What must have pushed him to commit these gruesome murders? Now, according to reports, David West was born in the fishing town of Buguma in Rivers State. He was a member of the Greenlanders, also known as Debam, a mafia-styled street gang that sprung out of the armed militant groups. Those who know him say that David is the only male child born into a polygamous home, but he and his mother lived separately from the rest of the family. He's described as a man with erratic behavior and was very quick to anger. I'm telling you, I'll your camera out. His mother later passed and David believed that she was poisoned by his stepmothers because of jealousy. David's mother was the one who betted the only male child in the family. So that might have brought on some form of jealousy from the rest of the wives. Now, people are of the opinion that David might have abort some form of hatred towards women and maybe that's why he went about killing women but we're not sure about that claim when david was asked the motive behind his actions by the police he answered by saying i don't know what comes over me to kill after i have killed i feel remorse and cry for killing but after that the irresistible urge to kill comes over me again i kill alone the police suspected that David might have had other accomplices, but David made it clear that he acted alone. He said, I am not killing for any court group. I just kill. David was eventually convicted of the murders and sentenced to death by hanging in October of 2019, but he still awaits execution to date as the death sentence is rarely carried out in Nigeria. What are your thoughts on this very disturbing episode in Nigeria as at 2019? The terrifying incidents brought fears to women, especially in PHC. Women feared to leave their homes, wondering if they would be the next victim. Leave me your comments in the comment section below. If you found this video insightful as well as interesting, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Ensure to click on the bell icon so you get notified anytime there's a new video. Remember to stay safe always and I'll talk to you guys in my next one.